Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, and welcome to another edition of Movement Radio. I am Chip Hazard. I'm Talon Williams. And I'm Roger Sierra. And it's Movement Radio Monday, as this has been dubbed, and we're back with another special guest, uh, Tiffany Ellerby, a.k.a. Baby. How are you today? I'm good. How are y'all? Doing great. We're good. We're good. Fantastic. All right. Monday. (laughs) <laughs> it is definitely Monday. That is for sure. Um, so I guess let's just kick this off simply. Um, for the people that don't know, who is Baby? Baby. Baby is a is a sneakerhead, first of all. That's where the name come from. Because my full name is uh, Sneaker Baby. Um, I love shoes. I love shopping. Um, I'm very outgoing. I'm the quiet one out the bunch until you know I get to kn- I get to know people and people get to know me. Then I I start opening up uh, a little bit more. Okay, okay, okay. Well, we gonna we gonna try to get you to open up a little bit more <laughs> tonight. It's all bit. this is comfortable. It's a comfort zone here. <laughs> yeah, right. We the comfort in, and we just as cheap. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, all right. So 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 we kind of got a little sneak peek of of who Sneaker Baby is, but before Roller Derby, who was Sneaker Baby? She was a girl that was always in her shell. Um, very conservative, you know, just like, uh, I wasn't a people person, but I was, but very quietly. Um, I did not go out, I really didn't. It enjoy like I really didn't interact with people as much unless I seen you every day or you was part of like a small circle. And when Derby came along, a lot of faces came along. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, uh, am I sure about this? Because I mean, of course, I've been around people all my life with school and playing other sports, but in adulthood, just actually being around and plus um I'm not from Chattanooga so the people that I did know at the time was like people that I have worked with or I have met through work friends but it was just a very little very few people and now I'm not gonna know a lot of people so where are you originally from I am from Atlanta Georgia ATL College Park at that (laughs) College Park yep (laughs) Bubble Sparks (laughs) um all right so you, you said that you you played other sports before roller derby tell us a little bit about that what 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 did you play so I played basketball I have done soccer I ran a little bit of track um I even did mascot one year uh my senior year of high school that was quite interesting and fun I, I'm sorry you did what I was the mascot oh the mascot that's, I was fun. Like, yeah. <laughs> that's fun I did it my senior year too yeah, it was quite interesting. Never thought I would do something like that. That did get me out of my shell a little bit. It sort of forces you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But but you're also, there's a certain amount of autonomy uh, with that because you, you know, you're in a, a suit. And that was the thing, because I was in a shit suit, nobody couldn't see my face. So things that I did did not matter because it's like, if you did not know I was in there, it was no judgment zone. And the only people that knew that I was in there was the people that I went to school with. And they knew me from school, so they know how I am. It just opened up a bigger, a bigger space. That's so, cool. Yeah. So, so how did you discover roller derby? I literally woke up one day and I was talking to my cousin. I was like, um, I think I want to roller derby because uh, I was already looking into what can I do as an adult, like a sport to get back in shape j- just because. And I'm like, I don't feel like doing soccer because I'm not running up and down the field. And I was like, uh, basketball. Yeah, that was like the next option. Then I was like, how about skating? I was like, I want to get back into skating because, you know, growing up, I I went skating all the time. And talking to my cousin, I went to my little, her son, uh, skating party. 
And that's where I met a teammate from my old team. Um, I played for a team in North Georgia and I met, uh, she introduced us and it was history from there. Okay. What team in North Georgia was, was that? Um, I played for the North Georgia Roller, uh, Roller Girls. North Georgia Roller Girls. That's yes. where you started? That's where I started. I played, uh, I was with them for a year. Then they kind of like broke up and I found a CRD. Okay. Okay. Um, and what position is it that you play? Well, now I play all positions. I can jam, I block, and also I am a pivot. Okay. Which, which is your uh, favorite? Ooh, it's kind of hard because last year was first season fully jamming. I kind of fell in love with it. Um, I guess pivot because pivot can go either way. Okay. Um, you're blo you're blocking, and also that jammer can take off that penny at any time to to pass it to you, and you can start scoring. Okay. That's pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. I think this is our first to... pivot person. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I think so. Yes, absolutely. Um. What would you say your first experience, like when you finally made the conscientious decision, okay, I'm, I'm going to do roller derby. How did you feel walking in that very first night, I guess, at the tryouts just to see if you can do it? Like what were your, I guess, emotions or like what were you feeling at that moment? Nervous. I was very nervous. Not to put on skates. I was just nervous because I was around new people. Didn't know what they were thinking. Like, oh, no, nah, she can't do this. But <laughs> I learned real quick, I'm very stable on skates and can take a hit very well. Um, after them showing me little things, by the next couple of practices, they realized like, okay, I was built and made for this. And I just grew, I've been growing every year from, the, from that first practice up until now, I'm still growing and still learning. I also like now also I get the chance of opportunity. I, I coach, our, I help coach our juniors. So I get a lot of more practice time of the basis with our juniors. And that also helps me in skill level as well. Okay. Well, that's great. Can't go wrong with the fundamentals. No, nope. no, nope. And it's like, when we start fun, I'm like, what is this? Cause I haven't done it in so long, but now it's like, <laughs> I do fundamentals. And then now we're moving up in our junior league where we're now doing level three. So they're getting the chance to do what we do on an everyday basis. So it's just a different level. Sometimes it feels bad. Like, oh, I'm hitting kids, but it's like, they want to get hit by us and they want to hit us uh, <laughs> as, as adults. <laughs> It gets very interesting on scrimmage days with the juniors. <laughs> I bet it does. <laughs> <laughs> they like, get up out my way. Yes. <laughs> uh, so, <clears throat> let's see. Um, with, uh, with the juniors, uh, that's the, the Ruby regulators, correct? Correct. Um, and it, they play the same season that you guys play the 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 main team pretty much um their season starts i want to say right in that it's more towards the it's weird how theirs kind of start where ours can go from january to like december depending on but jrda runs a regular season i want to say like august september um to the following August that took like how there it's kind of go because their playoffs are a little, a little different than ours okay and that's something that um I'm still learning we kind of still learning because we're now getting to that level of competitive you know being that level three and being that, and trying to be able to make it to playoffs and, and sanction and, and re, uh, regular games right okay Oh, so outside of, you know, roller derby and coaching and everything, what's something you like to do in the downtime you do have? Um, sleep, spend time with my boyfriend. <laughs> <laughs> um, I do like every two weeks, go to the nail shop. That's my a long time. Get me a nice uh, filling and pedicure and yep. grab like to eat pretty much. Oh, see, she said that magic word, pedicure. <laughs> I 
know I heard thrash. <laughs> <laughs> and I, start- a, I love a pedicure. And I tell them all the time, y'all can touch that Cali, but just move it down a little bit because I need that for my skate. <laughs> Because at first, I used to make them take it off. And then I was talking, I think it was chaos I was talking to. And we was just talking about pedicures and where we get our nails done, talking about the callus. I'm like, you keep that on? She was like, yeah, it works. Matt. When I start keeping it on, I understand. Just shave it down a little <laughs> bit, make it smooth. So when I have the girls out, we're good. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh-huh. You, you, so you're selling the feet pics too, or <laughs> oh no? I mean, I'm trying to avoid this. Hey, my feet pics can make some money, so if they want them. I'm I'm down for it. See, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> Kellen and Roger think I'm crazy. I said you are. You are. Let somebody let somebody ask. I'm indifferent. I don't care. Just I'm, I'm, say what hey, you want to sell. It's not my business. Look, I got. I I literally have like. My my toes are as long as my wife's fingers. Oh wow! Yeah, and, but hey, I'll sell them all day long, make some money. <laughs> I don't, yeah. I don't condone this at all. This is not, <laughs> no. no. Oh lord! All right, all right. Let, let, let's let's bring it back to roller derby. Um, we've asked this question for the last several weeks, so again, I'll ask you. Do you have any pre-game rituals or do you listen to something before you get, you know, to get your mind ready for the for the game? Is there anything that you do, anything like that? I do not have a pre-game ritual. That's because on game days, um, I'm ahead of merch. So I am making, me and Thrash are getting merch set up and together. And once I do that, it's, if juniors are playing, it's time for me to go to the juniors and get them together and get ready for warm up and uh, and everything. I do try to uh, get a bite to eat because everybody knows I'm the one. I'm the one person on the team that would not eat. I would go all day and won't take a bite to eat. Then I have to listen to Cope slash Bully get on to me about <laughs> not eating and anybody else uh, because it's, it's just really not good for me, period, not to eat. Um, but that's the hardest thing to do on a game day um, is to eat. Do you, do you okay. get nervous before you get on the track? No, I don't get nervous um, really at all. Um, depending like that first, if I'm in the first jail, depending on what I'm doing, I'm just like, all right, it's showtime. Here it goes. Let's get it done. And then if it was in a jitters or whatever, it's, it's gone. Once that whistle blow, everything has went out the way. Now, when I very my very first game that I played, I came back off an of ACL injury and a little bit of meniscus, and that was the very first uh, B Railers game. I was nervous as shit because <laughs> all I kept thinking about, I got this brace on in my knee. What am I gonna get out here and do? And I worked hard to get <laughs> to that point. <laughs> Um, but after that, it's been n- piece of cake. I just get out there and do what I do any other time. Right. That's what's okay. up. Absolutely. That's what's up. Hey, hey, confidence. I like that. I like, I like, she's like, I'm just going to get out here and do what I do. Yeah. And Cause then- I mean, you can't go out there. Well, you can, but if you in your head, the beginning of the game or all through the game, it 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 just it don't work well. I've had one of them games before where I had things going on and I could not shake it out of my head. And that game did not do well for me at all. And it's just like either you're gonna do it or you're not gonna do it at all. And it's like, why why step out there if if you just you mentally can't do it? Right, right. Cause it's a it's a big mental game. And I'm one of the I'm always in my head about something especially in practice now practice you're probably like who the hell is that and what is she doing she's off in space in la la land and she's doing everything but what she's supposed to be doing and i'm just like huh what who yeah <laughs> <laughs> but then gay that, that day's come it's like oh she was paying attention she just did the thing that we just worked on yeah i i gotta get together something to feel working <laughs> 
Yeah. yeah I, I feel you on that one. Yeah. Yeah. I'd I, I be in my head too. Yeah. And it's my, it's like my attention span just goes real quick. It is, even though I'm there, I'm listening. I just got in everything y'all just said, even though I don't look like it. And I'm just acting like, what the world did they just say or do? But that's in real life, <laughs> That's me every damn day. I have, I got a, I have ADHD, the high def version, and uh, that's that's basically it's me. It's like I'm listening. What did I say? Say it again. I what you, yeah. You know, you know. But um, you know, it is what it is. So, how long have you been um, doing roller derby? Um, this year would be year nine. Year nine. Okay. Year nine. Uh, and then you're still fairly young in roller derby than uh compared to some of the other ladies that we've had on the the show yeah i'm yeah i'm not young in age well yeah i mean i mean your 30s is your new 20s so i'm you know i mean you're younger than me so it's okay yeah, <laughs> yeah. but yeah i'm still typically young in the derby world yeah i think um if I'm not mistaken, Thrash is like the youngest, yeah. yeah. Uh, in in Derby years, I'm not talking yeah. like age, but I think tr Thrash is the youngest, and then uh, from from the the ladies that we've spoke with, um, uh, maybe either Heinz or you next. It's chaos. Say, yeah. It's chaos. Then me. Okay. And Hans and Stovall might be right in there together, but Bomb is the top. Right. Uh, and, and I love that because there's there's all different, you know, uh, longevities. Right. There and and you guys all seem to to coexist really well you know because in some of the other sports you get like the old heads and they're like they don't really want to work with the, <laughs> the younger generation you know they don't want to really teach the younger generation because it's that like they're coming from my spot kind of thing but it doesn't seem that way with with roller derby no, and that was the crazy part. When I stepped into the first practice with CRD, and that was like a shocker that the older people, the older skaters that's been skating for years did not care that these new people, and they was there to help teach, um, to show and learn, because they're just like, you are the next generation, because eventually one day I have to retire. You know, you just never know. and y'all you or whoever gonna have to be there to step up in to fill them shoes even though we have some quite big shoes to fill <laughs> of some <laughs> skaters and i i some quite big shoes to fill um and yeah like we the team is crazy because we all like you say we all been around for so many years or so less of years and the bun you wouldn't even be able to tell if you did not know us outside of Derby. Right. Right. Well, that, and that's, I think that's good um, because the, the, the older generation really want to see, you know, roller Derby progress and move on. Correct. Um, whereas like with, with, we'll just say NFL, like the older generation, it doesn't matter to them because they're getting paid millions of dollars and that franchise is more than likely going to be around forever, you know? Right. And we don't get paid, you know, so we do it freely. And we hear all the time, like the skaters that's been skating for years, come taking my spot. I want you to take my spot because that's motivation. That's making us get better in, in our craft and what we do. Cause I'm telling you, I'm still coming for some spots. I want a spot or two for people that's been on the team since day one, that's still skating around. Um, you know, I tell Cope all the time. She tell me all the time, come for my spot. I won't come in. Hurry, mage. I'm coming. 
<laughs> I'm coming. I, I'm gonna take that I'm spot. I'm working, yeah, I'm working to get I'm coming for a spot. I want I want that spot. You know, that is motivation. <clears throat> but if you don't want that spot, why are you doing it? Correct. You know, um, and that's something we kind of we kind of talk to our juniors about because you know we have some juniors that want to be on that competitive spot that like us and we have some that's just doing it you know just the past time for fun and it's just like well i get it i get both both ways but when you have most of the Georgia team you know that want to go to the next level it's like you're going to follow suit or you're just going to, you know, you could continue to be on the back end, but you can't be mad being on the back end if the play time is not there, the roster time is not there, whatever that you think you want is not there because of who works for that spot. Right. They got to have a certain level of dedication to get yeah. to that spot. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm with you. I'm with you. All right. Um, Here's something we haven't asked anybody else. You get you get to be the first one. Um, what is like that one special thing about you? What sets you apart from everybody else? My smile. <laughs> My smile, I guess. <laughs> I mean, because. I literally will walk in a room and brighten up a room just by my, sometimes I don't even have to say anything. I, I just smile. Smile. Smile yeah. like, you, I don't you know. But like, I, yeah, you, you, you look like you are happy-go-lucky all the time. I'm not, but. <laughs> but <laughs> <laughs> but I guess like my smile and I'm, I'm really a cool person. You know, when you really get to know me. Right? I mean, you know, we, we've been talking for a little bit. You seem pretty cool to me. Yeah. Right. I mean, I don't do things that most, do. like, I had to tell them from day one, don't ask me to do anything outside in the woods because I ain't going. <laughs> I'm, I, they used to do camping trips. I, I'm not coming. Hey, they must not seen scary movies. We, we ain't doing ca no camping. Ask them too, and, and I always say, I'm like I'm not, I'm not doing it. Um, nope. I do cabin in the woods. The no cabin in the woods. <laughs> I do cabin, but if if it's anything consistent, me sleeping outside, bathing, anything, if it ain't a pool, something that is a <laughs> lifeguard, and other people can see, and then I'm not, and I'm easily to get fine. Yeah, I'll do all day, but if it's gonna be hard. I actually told them I want them to take me hiking. I don't know why I've gotten in this. They haven't took me yet. I told them what I'm looking for when I go hike hiking. I just want to take a picture behind a pretty water waterfall. That's it. Okay. Well, there's a couple in Cleveland like that. Yeah, just yeah. just get me to a destination. Don't even have to be long. <laughs> yeah. Maybe a couple of feet. I don't care. Just <laughs> I want to say I went hiking. I can do a mile, maybe two. I'm not doing nine, which Thrash did, 50 miles. <laughs> <laughs> About 105 miles. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm, I'm not. No, she had to walk 105 miles to get to the hike to walk I, another 105 yeah. miles. Yeah. <laughs> yeah you went walking walk, you nine, go walk. Nine, it was a whole day of a hike. I can't. Mm. Yeah. No. <laughs> no. Uh, Cleveland. Cleveland has a couple of hikes that lead to a waterfall. I think one's like three miles though to get to it. Okay. Yeah. Um. That's on my uh my bucket list with the team. It's a hike. Have you heard of the app All Trails? Because it's a hiking app and it shows you all the trails nearby you and it shows you what they look like. I've not heard of that and nobody hasn't told me because they think it's a joke. <laughs> okay. Well, yeah. now you there know. You yep, you can download it. I've yep. it on my phone too, and that's how I yep. figure out the best and safest ones to go to. Yeah, there's quite a few at um. So since you're here in Chattanooga, you know where the Volkswagen uh plant is right uh -huh. there's a bunch of hiking trails there and yeah. they're they're well maintained and well monitored so yeah i just don't do bugs and snakes and all them critters so i need to go somewhere that this long as no snake gonna jump out at me i i can do all the other stuff 
Uh, well, we can't help you with that one. Yeah, I can't help <laughs> it's, you with that it's one. hiking, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah, I mean, snakes kind of have a mind of their own. You can't really do anything with them anyway. So true, true. <laughs> and you know what we need to do? We, we need to take her on a uh, the ghost hunt tour with us. Yeah. Yes, yes. The ghost hunt tour. Yeah, of course. That's the sister of hunting ghosts. Hunting ghosts, walking yeah. around in in the dark and creepy places with looking for ghosts. Yeah, look, you know, get EVPs and stuff like yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Everybody gets to sit in their own room. <laughs> I mean, we ain't bringing no Ouija boards or nothing, but you know, we can, can I have a flashlight. Yeah, yeah, you get a flashlight. Yeah, you know, I mean, you ain't gonna be seeing much, but you know, it, it's fine. You know, take okay. pictures. You know. And y'all not, y'all not gonna try to scare me while uh, we looking for the ghost. Oh, no, of course the, not. The environment is gonna do that itself. Yeah, okay. exactly. <laughs> I, I mean, I've never been on one, so so we gonna be first timers together. Okay. Okay. Chip's Chip's everybody gets to be the room. Of, yeah. Chip, well, Chip's the only one who's a skeptic when it comes to ghosts among the three of us. So. I feel him. I feel him. Well, you feel Even though ghost. Casper was a nice ghost to look at on TV, but you know. Yeah. Yeah. You yeah. might meet a friendly ghost. You don't know. It could happen. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I'm I'm the skeptic. I'm not positive ghosts exist. So I understand. I've never had an experience with uh a, a an altered dimension being. <laughs> Paranormal yeah. entity, as he, as we say. Oh, okay. Paranormal entity. I'm sorry. <laughs> Get the terminology right. Jeez. I know, right? <laughs> I'm sorry. I didn't know we were PC around here. <laughs> <laughs> we always are. What are you talking know, right? about? Yeah. Right? Yeah. Bruh. <laughs> what? I, I know. Okay. So, so, so we talking about shitting on the track. Feet pigs, <laughs> no. But we're 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 PC. There, that's politically correct, though. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't offend anybody directly, well, except for the feet pig people. I, I'll definitely defend them all day long. <laughs> <laughs> hey, some people just love. They have that fetish. <laughs> I mean, we don't kink shame. We don't kink but, shame. But no. that's that's near the bottom of the list. <laughs> That's right there with uh, furries. And, nah, furries uh, is above that. <laughs> <laughs> furries is above feet pigs. <laughs> um, now, so we met a bunch of you guys at uh, the Con Connuga convention. Uh, mm -hmm. Were you there for that event? I was there for the event. Okay. I uh, do monthly events in the morning time, and I think I did the last day that Sunday. Okay, that would have I, I. I I feel bad because I don't remember exactly who I approached and talked to about setting all of this up. <laughs> and so I'm that asshole. Okay. <laughs> um, so it wasn't Thrash who you set it up with. He doesn't remember. I don't remember. <laughs> I, I gave, I, I, I approached one of, I know it wasn't you, uh, cause I would remember the hair for sure. I changed um, I think then I might have had blonde. I don't know. I changed my hair all the time. Right. <laughs> um, but I just, you know, approached, gave a business card and said, hey, we'd love to have, you know, some of the ladies on to help promote the uh, the games and let people know more about Chattanooga Roller Derby because there's still a lot of people in Chattanooga that don't even know you guys exist. And that is so that is so true. I just said that last night. I was like, it's crazy how we have been around for all these years and people still have no clue that we here. I can understand the juniors because the juniors are still growing. They just got around, but they don't know that CRD has been around and it's growing. Like we have what 41 skaters yep. and three teams now. And two charter teams, right? Charter teams. Do you think it's because of the preconceived notion of what people think roller derby is and the stigma that kind of came with it, like what it used to be from the 80s and 90s and things of that nature? Like I'm sure people have seen the movie Whip It and things of that nature. Right. You think no, there is a preconceived notion so. still? 
No? No, I don't think so. Um, I mean, because most of the questions were like, do y'all still do that? I'm like, no, it's, you know, it's legalized now. You know, you just can't get away by slapping somebody. You, you, you'll get called for that. You go into the box. Right. Um, but I think now it's more of people just like, I don't think I can do it because I can't skate. But the funny thing is the ones that can't skate are the ones that be the best ones out there that can, can hold the ground once they learn. Okay. Um, and I have I, I have seen over the years, you know, people come in and can't can't skate at all, then turn around, they doing advanced stops and plows and running up and down the track, all the above. And you got some, and you have some that you know I've been skating all my life, but it's not me. I guess for dirt, you know, can't do derby. Uh, derby just not for them at the at the time. Well, also there's like a lot of people our age didn't learn how to skate on quads. They learned inline. And skating on quads, it's it's a whole different game. Yep. It is. Um, yeah. I, I learned on inline. I actually learned on both. And now if I put on inline, I'm going to be like, uh-uh. What is that? Because I haven't done, I, I literally haven't done that since I was probably 10. I've been on quads for forever because I thought quads was the more cooler thing to do you know you start to see people dancing around on quad you know too many people were moving along uh <laughs> skate around uh compared to what they do on quads you know rollerblading was like yeah fast speed get it there but then when you started to see people moving and jiving and turning around and doing certain things like oh i need quad skates i need the four wheels yep that's that was me i uh <clears throat> i never owned a pair of inlines uh anytime we would go to like the roller rink or whatnot i would rent inlines so so i could learn how to use those but i, I was always a fan of quads yeah because uh i mean i so i've seen revs though on inlines so it is out there you just can't do derby in inlines but you can ref all day in line. Hmm. Hmm. Uh, speaking of consideration, come ref with us. We'll be there on May fourth. Uh, or May. May How 6th. do I keep May sixth? May sixth. May sixth. I, I, Can you think about Star Wars Day too? Or much? think about Star yes. Wars, bro. <laughs> <laughs> See, I have so much going on in my head. It just. Uh, we'll be there. Maybe. Maybe we can talk somebody into getting on the track. <clears throat> I'm gonna nominate Talon. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm good. <laughs> yeah, I'm so excited uh, that y'all are coming to May 6th because y'all pretty much have free range to do what you want to do. Well, don't oh, tell wow. me that. Don't tell me yeah, that. Don't, don't, don't say it's that. Like, <laughs> it's really no limitations as long as you're not in the ref lane and in a ref way. Cause it's just like a photographer. A photographer can be anywhere along the track, on the floor, as long as they're not in the ref way in lane. Right. So, you know, y'all can talk to who you want to talk to, video who you want to, vid you know, whatever. Cause I asked mm. uh, Thrash, cause that's her department. I'm over uh, uh, marketing. So I handle all sponsors and, Things of that nature, getting us all the moolah. Okay. okay <laughs> there you go. You know, so I'm just like, well, what what did what they want to do? You know, what did they range? It's like, no range, really. I mean, yeah, she y'all want to set up and do a podcast. I don't know. Well, I mean, so in-person interviews, stuff like that, you know, yeah, you know, maybe get some footage of the game, you know. Maybe get some fans' perspective. You know, different. You know, different. There's Definitely, a yeah. plethora of ideas that we have. We just, you know, got to bring it all together that day. Yeah. And I don't know if y'all gonna be there the full day of Derby, but yeah. That's yeah. the plan. That's the yeah, okay. That's the plan. Yeah, I plan yeah. on being there for the juniors at three, uh -huh. and then for the rest. Okay. Yep, that is the plan. Mm -hmm. Um, and then we're going to try 
to make a scrimmage before um okay. so we can kind of get an idea of like where we need to be if we're going to do some filming or whatnot that way we're not going in blind on game day right. i'm just going and, in blind it's fine it's going blind yeah <laughs> That's and, fine, at, that's fine. and at one point, we'll go get some bacon from the bacon festival that's happening. This yeah, Sunday, I, I so. heard about the bacon festival. I'm going to have to hit the bacon festival up before I have to be back and ready for the juniors. And by the way, juniors, I'm recruiting. If y'all have kids from the ages 10 to 17 that can skate or anybody, send them. We have a boot camp coming up. Well, tell us more about the boot camp. Yeah. Yes. So, yeah. Yes. We yes. have a boot camp coming up. Uh, I just had a date in my in my head, and then I said it. <laughs> <laughs> we have the boot camp is actually the boot camp uh, is going to be June sixteenth through July 9th at Orange Grove because we practice on Fridays and Sundays from five thirty to seven thirty, and in, and it's co-ed too. Our junior league is co-ed, so. Anybody from the age of 10 through 17 that can, you know, skate and want to do derby, come see us. Come see me. I like, I like, I like all the upcoming new, new uh, skaters, either CRD or find a men's league that's around. Maybe if we get big enough, we can have a men's league with CRD. Who knows? Who knows what the future holds? That would be pretty cool. Yeah, it would be pretty cool. That would be yeah. um, what it, it, for anybody coming to that boot camp. What should they bring with them? Um, boot camp. I mean, skates, but we have a lot of longer gear. Um, but uh, we always say you will not. Most people don't feel comfortable until they're in their own pair of skates because it's like your own pair of shoes. But if you did come in and didn't have anything, didn't you know, get a chance time fast enough to to get anything for the boot camp, we do have. Loner, loner gear, loner skates. Hopefully, we have your size. Then, if not, um, you know, that's something you can always come watch. Uh, just because watching is a learning tool, you can watch all day. So, when it's time for you to get out there and do the same thing, you can kind of know what's, what's going on. You won't be as lost because you're like, okay, I kind of seen that. Now I got to put it into play, put it into perspective. And then also we're doing, if every, if you follow our social media, our Ruby's uh, Instagram or Facebook, and they come with a screenshot of what they got off, show us what they seen on social media, they can, um, that's their free interest into the game on May 6th uh, for any child between the age of 10 to 17. And hopefully they sign up for boot camp as well. And also they get a chance, they can meet the team there. Um, Juniors play at three, and they are forced to be reckoned with. There's, there's somebody to look at. I, I think I'm as much as I'm ready to see like all of you guys go. I think I'm more excited to see the juniors, uh, just because there's that they're the lower age range, and I want to see like what they do. They pick up. It's crazy. They pick up so fast. We can show something one time, and it's like constant. They they're picking it up, and wow. just to see the skill level where they at now is amazing. And I I've, I've been with them what this is year two, and just in the short period of time of me being on the coaching staff, the trainer staff with them is it's been amazing i mean i've been around since they started but i wasn't helping out then you know i have seen the kids um kids come and go i have seen some age up come over to crd and play a season then COVID hit and then everybody got live and figured out other things outside of derby um doing COVID, i was thinking about derby and thinking about how i was gonna lose up all the COVID weight and lord behold it happened start getting into the gym and lost more than just COVID weight. <laughs> but right, right. I found a new love now is like, I'm in the gym all the time. And I wasn't the type of person that would go in the gym. I hated doing off skates. I, I just like, I'm not working out worth nothing. I see y'all at practice. 
but I've seen the difference between me working out and when I didn't use the workout. Um, it's a big difference in my gameplay, in my mental, in my physical, everything that I do every during the day. It, it was a game changer. I, I hear I hear the the hitting the gym every so often is a game changer. I couldn't tell you the last time I hit the gym though. I, <laughs> I got I got two little boys um that I got a five year old and a six year old and chasing them is enough workout for me. I understand. I understand. I went Friday and I'll be going tonight after this. I just ain't got into the late workouts. I am a 5 a.m. morning workout person. Um, they talk about me all the time because I'm like, you know, y'all can always come to the gym with me at 5. They're like, nah, disgusting. <laughs> but I faithfully get up every day at 4.15 to get to the gym by 5. Wow. See, I used to do that, but then too many people started doing that and taking up everything I wanted to use. Yeah, no, um, when I... I guess because I, I choose to go downtown goals. I don't go to club Lee Highway. But yeah, I I get in, get in and get out. And it's a certain five o'clock crew. And it's just enough of us. It ain't crowded because I don't do crowd. Anxiety started to kick in. That's why I never went to the gym at first. I'm like, everybody's looking at me. Everybody watching me. Now it's like the same people is looking and watching me if they are. Or they really just stared off in space. So yeah, yeah, that's what it is. Nobody looks at anybody else at the gym. No, not really. No. Unless it's a machine that you want to get on, you're like. <laughs> oh, then you, they, <laughs> you you give them a different look, though. You're like, hey, hurry it up. <laughs> Are you finished? I, I'm ready to do that. Just, just point at the, the A. Hey, hey. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Can you beat that up a little? You just give them that look. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes you're like, hey, I'm gonna get a rotation and just take it from them. Right. Ooh. Well, we don't want to take up too much of your time. Uh we know you you're busy and you got a lot of things going on. Uh so one last question before uh we get out of here. And we've asked this uh if you could give one piece of advice to anybody coming up uh what is what is that piece of advice don't give up if derby or anything in life that you know whatever you want to do in life do it um because i had so many challenges and obstacles from the start of derby up until probably still now um, with health and outside and everything like if I can do it anybody can do it um, and I deal with things on a constant everyday basis because um, like I have lupus so it, I can be a mid flare up and I'm still coming to practice and I have not once given up I refuse to give up they tell me to take my breaks I'm like yeah whatever um, and I don't take breaks like I should but you know, if it's anything that you put your mind to, you stick to it, no matter how long it takes, like get to that goal, set a goal. If it's a small goal, you keep building off that goal. I've been setting goals from day one. You know, one of my goals was I wanted to make a, when I came to CRD, I was like, I wanted to be on the charter team, the A team, I or I at least wanted to be bubble. Then I heard about Team Tennessee. I wanted to do that. And last year, I had the opportunity, I, I made, I was bubbled last year. So I got a chance to play on A, you know, I played on A, I played on B. This year, same thing. I made both charter teams, A and B. And also I um, tried out for Team Tennessee and made made that team. So it, it's goals like that, that make, you, make me keep moving and pushing and anybody. Like I have a goal now, I want a playing spot on that A chart. And that is that is my goal. And that is something I'm working for as uh, as well as with Team Tennessee. I want a, a seat at the table. I'm ready to eat. I'm going to eat. I don't care how long it takes. Yes, I'm on the team, but I want, want, I want an eating spot. I want a spot that is in that rotation. 
I, I it's fine being an alt. It's fine riding the bench because that's that's all the pros of playing a sport. But I want a seating spot. I want to play. I want a rotation spot. I call them my eating spots because I'm I'm hungry for it and I've been I've been waiting and I've been putting in the time dedication because if you don't put in the time the effort the work you can't get with the goal to the goal that you want to get to. That's some like damn good that. advice. Yep. Damn good advice. Yeah. I can't, y'all, for real. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a talker. I'm the shyest one. <laughs> are you? Uh, are you? Are you? Yeah, are you though? <laughs> I am the shyest one until, like, it would take somebody to come talk to me and keep talking to me for me to talk back. And I'm just not gonna walk up and say, "Hey, I don't do that." If I've you're been, the, sh- if you're the shyest one, you had us fooled the whole time. <laughs> yeah, I, I am. Yeah. I'm telling y'all, I am the shyest one. Believe it Cap. or not, Cap. I have baby for a reason. <laughs> no, yeah. You- yeah, you okay. straight capping right now. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Plug, uh, take this time, plug, plug all the socials that you want to plug. Uh, we got Chattanooga Roller Derby. Uh, we on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. Uh, I'm about to say Snapchat. We're not on Snapchat yet, but we on uh, <laughs> we on TikTok. <laughs> I'm sure I will come up with a Snapchat thing and be like, Thrash, we gotta do it. Uh, TikTok, um, we got Ruby's, Ruby Regulators, Facebook, and Instagram. Check us out on all social media platforms. We are there. We are here. We're live. We're active. We're in the community. You know, anybody want want to do an event with us, um, taking sponsors, <laughs> anybody want to be a sponsor of any kind, reach out. I like it. I like it. Yep, absolutely. Absolutely. I, I mean, this has been great. Thank you so much for being here. We really do appreciate you being here. Um, that being said, though, thank you guys for watching this edition of Movement Radio. Anything you guys want to say before we bounce out here this evening? As always, check out movementradio.us. That is your one-stop shop for all things Movement Radio. What you guys say, Raj? As always, go to the YouTube. Obviously, if you're watching this, you're on the YouTube. So just go ahead and subscribe, leave a comment, like it, share with your friends. Uh, obviously, go to the Camp Jordan Arena on May 6th. See us there live and see these girls go out there and kill it um, and get the number one spot, right? Right. You see? <laughs> that number one spot shout out to all of our sponsors of course to og gear anime.com uh audible trial.com forward slash movement radio canva zoo lily w.gg element tour just cash clothing get response and entertainment earth thank you to all of our friends who've been down with us since day one you know who you are again thank you uh so much baby for being here tonight we will catch you guys next time let's hit them with the outro Please do not leave without leaving a like, comment, share, and subscribe on your favorite podcasting platform and right here on YouTube. Make sure you check it, check us out on all of our social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok. Check out the YouTube channel here. Subscribe. Click that bell to get notified of our latest video. Streamlabs.com forward slash movement radio forward slash merch. Go cop some merch. And once again, movementradio.us. Your one-stop shop for all things movement radio. I am Chip Hazard. I am Talon Williams. And I'm Roger Sierra. And this is Movement Radio.